Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat. I'm sure I'm plugged in. Yes, I am. Um, this is episode number 879. Yes, I've got a bunch of these done. I'll tell you about that later on. And the topic today is self-love is the key to all your relationships, especially the one you want to have. And I'm going to tell you lots of reasons why, which is why I'm making this open-ended. I don't tell you like three reasons why, because it's too technical. It, there's many reasons, and I'll explain a few of them in this talk. Before I jump in and give you the whole shebang, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day. My name is Barry Selby. Welcome to my broadcast, by the way. Um, I am an inspirational speaker, love and relationships expert, a spiritual guide, and author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover. Um, a book I recommend highly, by the way. I'm very, very proud of this book and, and biased about it because I wrote it. So tell me about the book. Hi, Courtney. Nice to see you. Um, congratulations on winning in the group that I can't tell anybody about because it's private. <laughs> um, besides all that, I'm a passionate champion for Divine Feminine, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. And that also what started these talks almost three years ago called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So the topic today is about self-love, as you may have guessed from the title, and it is episode 879, as I mentioned, because I've done a bunch of these talks, and I'll tell you about where you can find all of those at the end of the broadcast, because there's a lot of resource out there for you. It's all free on Facebook and YouTube, and I'll tell you all about that later on. Even though I'm telling you all about it, even I'm telling you all about it now. Um, so if you've been watching my broadcast at any length over the last couple of years, I talked about self-love quite a bit, but I thought this time I'd be more blunt about it, because... A lot of people look at self-love one of two ways. Either it's too simple, too wishy-washy, or it's too egotistical. Both of which are wrong, by the way. Um, I know people look at this, and especially people who are, who are heart-centered and caring people, that think that loving yourself somehow is a selfish act. Get over yourselves. <laughs> because self-love is absolutely, fundamentally, something that all of us, including myself, ought to be giving ourselves more often. And I mean, from the point of view of caring and respecting ourselves, there's so many pieces to this. I'm going to attempt to remember several good ones for you because I've talked about this many times before. So one of the things about self-love is when you start loving yourself, first of all, and the biggest one of all, is you become less dependent upon the love from other people. Now, it sounds maybe obvious, maybe not. Maybe you think that other people's love is special, different from your own love. Not really. It's kind of like the universal blood type. You know, give yourself more blood, more of that, other people can give you some, it's all good stuff. But the trap we fall into, for many of us, especially in the romantic love setting, is that that particular person has to give us the love we need so we can feel okay. That's a lot of pressure to put on somebody else. And it's a lot of pressure, to, it's a lot of pressure to put on yourself because you've got to keep that person around to feel loved. It's almost like you want to, well, <laughs> that's a bad analogy. Is it, sorry, I was thinking about the movie, which I can't remember the movie now, but it's about where the woman traps the man in her house because she's afraid of losing his love. That's the extreme level of that. But here's the recognition piece, is when you learn to love yourself, you don't need to trap anybody in your house. <laughs> That's one teaching right there. Okay, let's move to some more. Let's, let's move to less controversial areas, shall we? The other part, or the other, one of the other big pieces about loving yourself and self-love is that you get the freedom to say no way more often than maybe you've given yourself credit for. When you have this thing where you think other people have to love you first, you tend to be in a bad place where you have to say yes more often than you want to. And that's going to lead you down places, paths, choices, results that you don't really want. And when you love yourself first, self-love primary tool, and I'll tell you about some teachings about that in a minute, you'll discover that you can say no without any wounding to yourself. And you can say no because you respect yourself. And there's another piece of the puzzle, by the way. When you do love yourself, when you put self-love in your life, you have more respect for yourself. Because that dependency on other people, that need to get it from other people, is no longer there. And you might be thinking to yourself, well then, why do I want to be in a relationship? Because when you love yourself first, primary relationship becomes a very additive, not addictive, additive experience. In fact, when you love yourself first, you become a better partner in relationship because you're not needing the other person to keep you full all the time. And if you and your partner both practice self-love, you'll have the most abundant, expansive, and loving experience it's possible to have. Unfortunately, most people haven't got a clue about this. So have them watch this broadcast, it might help them. <laughs> so that's two main pieces right there, is about not being so dependent upon other people for love and being comfortable saying no to other people so you don't need it. 
and three, I say three pieces, is you become a better partner in relationship as well. And this actually applies to other areas of life as well, like family dynamics. When you love yourself first, all those family dynamics you've been, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Chained to, <laughs> maybe a good way of putting it, become less, less um, restrictive. When you, cause, because a lot of this stuff in our family dynamics is wired in where our love is tied to some family situation, family participant, some, some behavior, some rules, some structure in our relationships that kept us trapped in a family dynamic that we don't know how to free ourselves from. But here's one of the biggest keys, unlocking the door, to free yourself from that. Loving yourself first. I mean, it sounds so simple in so many ways, yet it's the most profound, powerful, and resourceful place that we can come to. One of the things that I'm aware of too, when we love ourselves and practice self-love, we not only say no to certain um, dependencies on other people, we'll actually make less agreements that pull ourselves away from who we are. I was sharing a couple of days ago, I mean, just now over the, over the head cold I've been going through for the last four days. And I did a lot of less, less things because of that. Those sort of things are actually an act of self-love. Now, some people would say, no, you've got to keep going, push through it and get things done and make things happen. Only if, only if you love yourself first. Because some part of us feels like we're driven to do something. You know, the, the term I was talking about the other day, the other week about people in business, maybe it's a Cali, LA, LA, California thing about, you know, crush your goals, you're going to make it happen. It's like, really? Why not celebrate your goals by loving yourself and doing things you want to do from a place of abundance, flow, and grace? Because you're filled up first, and then everything else you do, everything else you contribute to, everything else you participate in, is additive to that place. Sometimes people are driven to crush their goals and make things happen is because they think when they get there, they'll feel better about themselves. You know who you are who think about that. There's this thing about, I'll be happy when. You'll be happy when you get that job. You'll be happy when you get that house. You'll be happy when you get that money. You'll be happy when you get that partner. You know, the sin, you know that? That paradigm, that syndrome? When you love yourself first, when you truly apply love to yourself and do it from a caring, compassionate, and authentic place, all of those things that you'll be happy when disappear. They become opportunities, yes. They become places you can play, yes. But they're not critical to your happiness. One of the side effects, one of the other side effects of loving yourself first, you tend to be happy automatically. There's a, there's a quote, there's a, maybe a book, which is called Happy for No Reason. When you're happy for no reason, it's because you already know you're sufficient as you are. When happy for no reason, you already feel that from inside. Now, this is going to break the paradigm that a lot of people have been trained under, which is codependency, which I've spoken about, talked about, and trained people on for many years now. It's become a prevalent topic because I have a passion to stamp out codependency once and for all. Having the practice of self-love first, to really focus on loving yourself, eliminates codependency. When it does, it undoes the knots you've tied with yourself and somebody else. It, it frees you and releases the chains that you've linked yourself to other people, whether it's past relationships, past paradigms, co-working environments, family dynamics, any of those things. When you really learn how to love yourself, all of those hooks, all of those things that you were hooked into, release their grasp because you don't need them anymore. We are incredibly powerful beings, incredibly powerful humans that have this bad habit of thinking we're not. And when we think we're not powerful, we start to look to other people to get power from, or to be fed by, or to be on the coattails of. I'm going to say it again. Self-love frees you from that. You may be guessing I'm a th I've got a theme here, and I really do because I'm so clear that so many people are missing the boat because they're so focused on out there, out there, getting, getting, grabbing, taking, having whatever it is they want, they're forgetting that when they love themselves, none of that's required. Yes, the things you want to do out there, absolutely. In fact, what I discover for myself and what I teach in my clients is when you start to love yourself first, your commitment to make a difference in the world gets stronger and you want to do things out in the world, but they don't come from a place of trying to achieve something or try to get something. <clears throat> they, try, they come from a place of wanting to give something. Very different. And then the things, the accolades and the prizes and the winnings and the money and all these things that come to you for doing these things are purely bonuses. They're not the result. They're, they're not the goal. They're, they're the side effect of what you're doing, which is serving. I talked, to you, I talked yesterday about um, who do you serve, what do you serve. 
this is one of the reasons why I talk about self-love because when you do that, your ability to give becomes, well, almost infinite. I was talking yesterday about how I serve at Agape Spiritual Center, it's my spiritual home, being over 25 years. I still serve there, despite some situations that have happened over the last few years, because I filled myself up first. Now, back in the day, when I was volunteering some other places, I would volunteer and serve to get something, and I would always end up being drained. Very clear difference, and I know this now from both sides of the, sh of the experience, of giving to get and giving, to, and, filling, and giving from the overflow. Very different, very profound. So as you may have guessed, I'm very passionate about people loving themselves first. It's what inspires my work and what is one of the core elements of my teaching, which is why I also created the self-love meditation. There are so many things you can do to love yourself, and it's things that are activities that you can do, whether it's sleeping more, whether it's eating healthier, whether it's drinking more water. These are all acts of self-love you can do for yourself. There's also things you can do like meditating, going for walks, getting more sun, um, apologizing to people you've affronted. All this stuff could be actions you do after you love yourself first. I have, I said I had the self-love meditation, I'll put the link in the comments. Basically it breaks down a very simple, practicable, practical, practical, and easy practice you can do every day. It just requires five minutes in the morning and five minutes in the evening. And I put in audio meditations in it because I realized when people are reading something, they can't do the practice with a mirror. So this is a mirror meditation. Yes, open-eyed meditation, not with your eyes closed that takes you to a deeper place of connection with yourself. And the audio tracks are there to help you. So you don't have to keep looking at my guidebook, which is what comes with it. But the reality is if you do this, in fact, I'm on a summit that's airing sometime next month in November. I'm not sure the date's exactly yet. But that summit absolutely has in it the focus on being self-love for, for healing, for wholeness, and for everything else. And so I got invited to be on the summit because I talk about this a lot. <laughs> you may have guessed by now. So my invitation to you is to find ways to love yourself first. All the other things out in the world you can do, but start by loving yourself first. And if it's something as simple as what I recommend in my self-love meditation, that's only 10 minutes a day. The rest of the day you can do everything you're doing, but you, you build the foundation first. It's like, well, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of analogies. You know what, forget it, I don't have any analogies for this one. When you love yourself first, everything else gets easier. When you love yourself first, you take better care of yourself. When you love yourself first, you get to express in the world and you get to serve in the world in a much better way. And I'm passionate about that, as you may have guessed. So you're welcome, Courtney. Well, you were saying thanks for the same thing? Oh, you were saying thanks for that. Sorry, I saw something bounce on my screen, so I, you said thanks. That was for, th yeah. <laughs> I'm conjoining two things. So having said all that, um, I think I made my point. There's more, more things you can discover if you start practicing self-love. And in fact, I'm just to let you know publicly, I've been talking about this on and off for a while, and I think I've got clear now. The one I'm, I'm going to launch is a, and I hate using the term mastermind, but it is a mastermind of sorts. It's a group course, a group get together, which is I'm calling right now for shorthand, the Love Tribes, the Love Tribe, Love Tribe Mastermind, I can't even say it clearly, about focusing on how to practice self-love, self-support, and self-confidence in your own life. So that's going to be launching soon. If you want to find out more about that, message me on social media. Um, I'll tell you more about that. I don't have the structure for it, I don't have a web page for it, none of that stuff yet. It's coming soon. I want to launch it actually before the holidays because... <laughs> oh yeah, let me tell you about this piece. We've got the holidays coming up, as you may be aware of. In November, especially in America, November, Thanksgiving, not other countries, and Canada already had theirs, but Christmas time as well for other countries as well. That can be, these can be the most challenging times to practice self-love. So if you start now, you start practicing self-love from this very moment forward, you'll be much better shape come Thanksgiving and come Christmas. So I invite you to check out my self-love practice. Again, I'll put it in the link in the comments. You can get it for yourself and practice it for yourself and do whatever else works for you to love yourself. That will change your life. The, the Love Tribe Mastermind, said it clearly that time, is coming soon as well. Let me know about that if you're interested. And as always, as I keep saying, if, if you've seen my broadcast, you know I say this all the time, take care of yourself. That's a part of self-love. This is not wishy-washy, as I mentioned. <clears throat> oh, by the way, let me, let me clarify what I said at the beginning about, about, about wishy-washy and, and uh, ego-driven because I didn't qualify what that is because wishy-washy people think when you're loving yourself it's kind of like namby-pamby stuff and I'm using really, su really silly terms because the thing is people forget that loving yourself can sometimes be the most courageous thing you can do. If you carry a lot of judgments and wounds from the past of your own history, maybe traumas from childhood, loving yourself might be the most challenging thing you could do, which is why I recommend my meditation because it's not hard to do. But by practicing it, you start to take down the walls you have against yourself. So if you're dealing with history of pain, suffering, trauma from past relationships, from past upbringing, 
This is a tool that will help you, not as a transformational experience, but as a simple building block to restore your self-esteem. So that's one piece. The second piece about being ego-driven, self-love is not about your ego-driven head because ego lives up here. Love lives down here, in case you didn't figure that out mechanically. So self-love bypasses the ego. In fact, self-love tends to humble the ego. That's why I recommend it, because we could use less egos and more heart in this world. So I think that makes my point clear enough. So any questions, comments, please message me or comment below in the broadcast. I'll put the link in the comments for my self-love meditation and my books, I mentioned it. Um, and if you want to talk deeper, I'll put a link to chat with me as well. I encourage you, I invite you to practice self-love on whatever way form you do, whether you want to use my self-love meditation or something else. I talk about it in my book. I talk about it in my coaching. I'm kind of like single focus in this comment. So I hope this made sense to you. Um, I will put this information again, links to me in the comments. Reminders, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do talk about other things besides self-love, but that's one of my themes. So you can find the broadcast, if you watch me live, you can join me on my personal page on Facebook at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day, which is Barry Selby. Um, you can, there's a button around somewhere in the broadcast where you can tap on it for more information, and one of those options is to be reminded, reminded next time I go live. Secondly, um, the replays go to my business page on Facebook, which I put them on all the time, which is Barry Selby, the author. So you can watch them there at your leisure. You can binge watch them, although frankly, binge watching on YouTube is easier, which I'll tell you about in a moment. Um, so like my page, Barry Selby, the author on YouTube, on Facebook, although Facebook's not saving all of them, one of those annoying things. So I backed them up onto YouTube, thankfully. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my channel and watch the playlist, which is Messages from the Masculine. All of, these, all of these are out there. All the ones before this and this one will be out there too. You can binge watch these over about <laughs> two months. I don't know how long it'll take. Um, and transform your life. That's my free gift to you. <laughs> it just, just takes some time to watch. So I invite you to go check those out. Subscribe to my channel and watch those. Um, and again, links will be in the comments. I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me. I hope this made some sense to you. If you have any questions, thoughts, concerns, wants to get some help, reach out to me. That's what I'm here for. With that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, same channel. And as always, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.